Hi, welcome to My View from the Woods. My name's Todd. I'm in my garden area and I want to go over some things that I'm going to do to prepare my garden for next season. It is Columbus Day weekend and typical central New York weather the first couple weeks in October are generally really nice. There's a high pressure that builds over us. We get blue skies and the weather is unseasonably warm. It's in the mid 70s right now. Normally it's in about the 60s. But anyways, it's just a beautiful day and I want to get this started because I want to show you my garden throughout the year and I'm going to take clips from these vlogs and put them into how I do things. So how I grow potatoes, how I grow garlic, how I do this, how I do that. But I tried to do that previously, but then I would not ever finish the video. So I figured if I do a weekly vlog and go over what I'm doing, then I can take cuts and pieces from each week and put it into a how-to video over the length of the season. But since it's October and I'm planning for my next year, I want to show you what I'm going to do. Now I do still have some things growing in the garden and I'll show you pictures. I have some 1500 year old cave beans that are on a fence. They're just waiting to dry. I have some peppers, um, which I probably won't use too many of. I need to get rid of. I have some beets. I have a few uh, slicing tomatoes left. And like I said, I have some beets and some carrots and some green onions. And then I have a very small fall garden. Um, that I have like turnips, rutabagas. I tried to grow spinach, but the rabbits ate it. Uh, some watermelon, radishes, a little bit of odds and ends. Uh, but I really want to go over what I want to do this week. So this week, what I want to do is prepare my area for my garlic. Usually I plant garlic after Halloween and before Thanksgiving. So when I find a good chunk of weather in that November area, then that's when I plant my garlic. But I need to get the soil ready. In fact, I probably should have had it ready about two weeks ago, but I've been fairly busy and just haven't gotten to it. So I'll show you how I'm gonna get ready to plant garlic um, right after Halloween, which is in a couple weeks. This is Caden, this is my Springer Spaniel. He loves it here at the garden, and it's probably one of the reasons I come down here every day is to give him a good run. He loves it here. He loves to eat the vegetables, believe it or not. So, um, you know, you're going to see him in a lot of videos because he just can't not get in the way. But up here is where the garlic, I'm going to plant the garlic. I planted it along this fence. This fence is um, a blessing for the deer, but it's really hard to keep the weeds away from it. Now what I had planted in here after I pulled the garlic, I had 105 garlic plants in here and I grew them at 8 inch and 6 inch centers. Decided that I like the 6 inch centers better, so that's why I'm going to plant them. So I put in some buckwheat so that the plants are growing and putting energy from the sun into the ground and feeding the microorganisms that are, that are in the soil. But I need to dress this up. And I'm going to show you how I do that, but first before I have harvested the buckwheat, I tried to harvest it or cut the stalks off. They're laying over here. Cut the stalks off before the, they went to seed. So that's why it's sort of looking like it is. But I really want to hand weed this a little bit first. And then I'm going to put down some amendments. Then I'm going to put down some fresh compost. And I'm going to show you that process. So here's a typical area. You can see a few weeds, get my shadow out of the way. You can see a few weeds have grown in here since. I'm not worried about the mushrooms, they're, they're good. I have a few of these weeds here and all I'm gonna do is go through and hand pull out these weeds. Now this is vine weed. This is just a nasty weed. I don't think it really hurts the plants, it's just ugly and it's hard to, it's hard to get rid of. Caden is trying to eat the buckwheat stems. But I try to pull this out as much root as I can and any grass roots. So I'm just going to go through this and quickly hand weed it, pick out the weeds from the fence, mainly the grasses. They're going to be more of a problem than anything. So I'm just going to touch up the weeding. And when I get done with that, I'll show you the next step. All right, the next step is to amend the soil. And what I use is a mixture of Oh, feather mail, bone mail, bat guano. I'll put a list down below of what's all in this. I don't know if you can see it with the sun. It's, a, it's just a granular dry mix. And I put about a cup over, I don't know, eight or 10 square feet. So all I do is just grab a scoop, get downwind of it. And 
and sprinkle it on. Now this is all natural. There's no chemical fertilizers in this. So it's also slow release. So I'm not really worried about it going to burn the garlic bulbs when I put those in. That's not going to be a worry. It's a slow release. So the compounds in this will be released to the microorganisms very slowly and help feed them. Now I just do this because you know, we've harvested garlic out of here. We've taken some we've taken some nutrients out of the soil. Even though we're going to put more nutrients in the soil, we've still taken some out. I don't see where it really hurts to improve the fertility of the soil. as we go. Now you can see I left the buckwheat in place. I just took a knife and cut off the stalks and the seed heads and the flowers. And the reason is that is I want those roots, the buckwheat roots, they've done their job. They've taken nutrients from the sun, put them down in the soil, fed the microorganisms in the soil. But now as they decay, they're also going to be feeding the microorganisms. So we're just going to leave them right in place and I'm going to put compost over the top of them. Now the compost I use, we got a couple piles over here. Like I said, one of the people in the garden. What you got, Caden? You got a block? Huh? You got a block? Huh? You know, you're going to run. He wants to play. He gets a little bored down here at the garden and likes to play. But anyways, one of the People in the garden is a landscaper and they have a dump trailer. So he brings some compost down. This is green, just green waste compost from the county. This is the fine stuff. And I had problems with the cheaper coarse stuff last year. It just didn't grow as well as it did the year before. So this year we're gonna go completely with the fine ground. And you see I've used a little bit of it. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> go get it. Good boy, bring it back. Bring it back, come on. Come on. Come on. Take your time, just take your time. Thank you. Jeepers, I have to get your toy. What do we do with your toy? Now, go find your toy. That's over by the car, go find your toy. He'd rather chew on the block of wood, believe it or not. Anyways, it's just broken down green waste material. You can see it's pretty fine. Really nice material, and this has been sitting here a while, and it's cold, so it's not working anymore inside. So, I haven't got to worry about it. You can see where it's gray in here? This is where actually it was working at one time, and got probably too hot, but it's still gonna be a good compost. It's mostly organic material, and it'll work fine. Now, when I was talking about bindweed, this is how noxious this plant is. So this bindweed that's on top did not seed on top of this compost pile, the roots actually came up from way down below in the soil. You can see how long the roots are, and that probably took longer. I didn't get them off. Now, really, it doesn't hurt the plants. Yes, it's taken some nutrients from it. It's also mining them because these roots go way down into the clay soil that's underneath and probably bring nutrients up. And it stays so low that it's not actually going to interfere with any of the plants that we, we plant. It just doesn't look good. It's sort of a pain in the butt. Um, we have plenty of water. We have water down here in the garden, so it's not really a problem of watering the plants. So it doesn't really affect anything. It just doesn't look good. And it's sort of my bane. If you ever talk, or you ever watch Charles Dowling's videos in England, they have bindweed there too. He hates it as much as I do, or maybe he hates it more. But anyways, let's get on with this. So now I've got the amendments on top of the old garlic bread. Now I'm gonna put on some new compost. Now you can see the white on here. That is perlite from my microgreen.
So that's it. That bed is done. You can see how I just used the back of the shovel to level it off, put it on a pile. Just pick a height and sort of screed it off with a shovel. Sometimes I go around and I just tamp the front so it doesn't erode as much. But if it runs down in the aisleway, that's okay. Remember, these plant roots will travel out of your beds. So if you have good soil in your pathways, you're going to have better plants. I'm going to use my own garlic um, that I grew this year as seed. Normally I buy new seed in, um, but I just wanted to save some money this year. So I saved as much of the good music garlic that I had. All my garlic was actually pretty good. Some of it was a little overgrown. I left it in a little bit too long, but that's all used up. Um, I picked the best, biggest bulbs and put aside. They're in my friend Bruce's basement where it's a little bit cooler than what I have and he's actually gonna give me a pound of some of his white German garlic to add and this is where I'm gonna put it. Hope to get in maybe between 120 and 150 cloves into this section. So some of you this may be all you need for your garden and you, you'll be done ready for winter. Um, I've got a lot more to do because I do a lot of different things in my garden. Some of it's just experimental, some of it's for canning. I do get rid of some produce by selling it and I do give a lot of it away so yeah that's all I'm gonna do for the day and that's pretty much how I work I come down here for an hour hour and a half play with the dog let the dog run do a little bit of work and then I go back to the computer and start doing some more work or planting microgreens or you know whatever I need to do so I am consistent I come down probably at least five if not six days a week and do this for an hour but remember, I have a pretty large garden here. So, you know, it takes me a little bit more time. But it's really not that hard if you just break it up into little pieces. If you let it go for a couple weeks, come back to it, and now it's all a mess, then it seems like a lot of work. But if you do a little bit each day, just a little bit, it really makes it seem like it's that much easier. So you see, Caden is not a big fan of the sunshine. So he likes it in the shade. And you can see he's got all of his toys, whether it's a bop toy, a tomato steak, a block of wood, or a rotten piece of wood. He has all of his toys here. And you can see his tongue's all dirty because he eats dirt. But anyways, I'm going to play with Caden a little bit more. You want to play? You want to play fetch? Play with Caden a little bit more, and then I'm out of here for the day. And then when I come back tomorrow or the next day, we're going to start working on this project. And I'm going to show you how I set up... Uh, my garden beds. I don't use string or twine or anything like that. I just do it by eye. There you go. Ah, bring it back. Bring it back. Come on. Get in the middle. There you go. Come on. There you go. Good boy. Oh, you fumbled it. Where are you going? Come here back. Oh, what? He has fun wrestling with it. Alright, well that's it for the garden today. We'll see you tomorrow.